What's up boys, I'm Lauren Plays with Strasar6 and in today's video we're going over 10 tips for solo queue in 10 minutes. Solo queue is the number one way to improve as a player within this game and it is very difficult. I personally cut off all my friends, everybody I play Rainbow with just to solo queue and get better for me and for my channel. I personally by doing this ended up actually solo queuing to Diamond and got a, a much better player. But in today's video I'm going to give you guys the 10 ways I did that. Start with the first tip, we have staying alive. Staying alive is the biggest tip I can give you guys if you want to get good at solo queuing. You gotta have the mindset that it's a 1v5. If I die, we lose this round. Your life should be the most important one in the entire round. Should you do things for your teammates still? Yeah, like obviously, but you don't want to like die early. Cause even if you get two kills and you die early, that's bad. You want to stay alive as long as possible while still making an impact upon the round. It's a hard thing to balance making an impact and staying alive, but once you learn to balance it, you're going to start winning a lot more of your rounds. Moving on to tip number two, this applies just like tip number one. Focus on you, bro. A lot of people, they get mixed up when they're playing Silica. They get tilted over things that they can't control. They watch their teammates miss 55 bullets from an LMG on a target standing still. Is it frustrating? Yes. Do we want to rip the hair out of our heads and punch the person through the screen? Of course we do, but we can't do that. We just got to focus on our own things and do what we can do and what is in our control. There are things that are just out of our control. We can't pick up our teammates' controller. We can't talk trash to them and make them do certain things just because we're talking trash. That's not how life works. It's definitely not how Rainbow works. So we just gotta focus on what we can control and focus on the things we can do to help our teammates be better and to help us be better and to make more of an impact upon the round and end up winning the round. Moving on to tip number three, playing for time this is just like staying alive but it's a little bit different so when you play for time on defense and offense it's a bit different defense the clock is your friend the lower that clock goes the better chance you have of winning so your job is to milk the clock get that clock as low as possible to make sure like once you, once that clock gets under a minute the attackers are kind of getting into the crunch time like they got to go to the site they're the ones under pressure but the rest of the round, the attackers can do really whatever they want. They can lollygag, all that. But if you milk that clock and let it run all the way down, you have a much higher chance of winning. Now, on the attacking side, it's a much different story. The clock is your enemy. You got to beat that clock. You should be, like, pressuring the site and pushing the site right about when the minute mark hits. Like, you should be on the site. That way you have actual time to plant the bomb and get the kids out of, out of corners. Because a lot of times I see mistakes attacking people make, especially in solo queue, they wait till the end of the uh, round to attack. Like they wait till the last 20 seconds. In the last 20 seconds, it's almost a guaranteed victory for the defenders, especially if you're outmanned or equally manned because they're going to know exactly where you're coming from. It's really hard as an attacker to win those because they're going to know where you're coming from as a defender. Moving on to tip number four, we have wait to pick your operator. This is something that not only applies to solo queue, but it applies to your five stacks as well. Your solo queue teammates do not care about you. They hate you. They don't like you. They're going to pick whatever operators they like. And instead of being stupid and picking operators that you want to play or you want to do this with, swallow your pride. Wait. Let them pick their operators. I don't care if they're picking Cav and Orcs. Just, just let them do their thing. And then whatever operators you need to pick that are sufficient to the site, end up picking. Good example is if you're attacking and they all pick fragging operators. Let's say one of them grabs like a Twitch. Okay, she can help me. Let me get a hard breacher so I can open up the wall and that Twitch will hopefully help me. If she doesn't, that's out of our control. We can't really worry about that. We got to find a different way to adapt. On defense, same thing applies. Nobody prick, nobody picks like a bandit or Cade, someone to get the wall. You got to do that. You got to pick that operator. Nobody gets a, a fragment operator like well, Meyer Jaeger, get that operator. You got to fill in the roles that are absent that your teammates leave behind. That is how you're going to win a lot of games. Moving on to tip number five, we have muting toxicity. You guys will be surprised how easily you can let people get under your skin if you just let them keep talking. Rainbow has a very effective method of having people shut up. It's a mute button. You press it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. You can't hear anything they're saying. And they're quiet. You can't hear all the bullcrap they're talking. And you don't have to worry about it. Because when that's muted, you can focus on the round instead of focusing on people. Because I promise... The more you listen to toxicity and the more you keep trying to come back at it and keep trying to be like, oh, well, I did this or, oh, well, you're like this. No, that's not helping at all because 
you're not focusing on you, you're not focusing on the team, you're not focusing on the round, you're focusing on trying to beat the other person in something that you shouldn't even be competing in. It's just completely pointless. Moving on to tip number six, this is one of the biggest tips in the entire video, and that is root car insurance. Root car insurance is a new and up and coming car insurance that is extremely effective. The thing that root car insurance does differently than the other ones is that instead of looking at your entire driving record, they look mainly at your driving score and how you perform while you're with them. When you join root car insurance, you'll be graded on how you perform. So the better you drive, the better your rates are. I'm a teenager and there's lots of us teenagers out there. We can't, we have to accept the fact that we're paying 300, 400, even $500 a month for car insurance. It's absolutely ridiculous. With root car insurance, you can pay much less than that. You just have to make sure you're a good driver. So make sure you guys go check out root car insurance. Link is down in the description down below. Moving on to tip number six, we have avoiding tilt. Now muting toxicity, like I just talked about, is one of the main ways to do this. Uh, lots of times people who are in your lobby who talk trash are going to tilt you very easily. And getting tilted in solo queue, you're screwed. If you get tilted mid-match or even at the beginning of the match, you will probably end up losing. So you have to do everything in your power to avoid getting tilted. Mute all toxicity. Get rid of it. Whenever you die to something that's super tilting, like let's say you like missed a shot that you know you could have hit and you die and you're just freaking out. Or let's say your teammate fails a clutch. You just, you got to focus on things you can control. If you lose, if you fail a clutch, if you miss a shot, if your teammate does all of that, don't worry, move on. Because if you dwell on the past and the mistakes that have already occurred, you're more likely to make them and you're not going to be able to move on from them. You have to move on from the mistakes you make in order to keep progressing. Moving on to tip number seven, we have talk. This is a very simple tip. I don't care if no one in the lobby is talking to you at all. Just speak, call out, ping. Because I guarantee you, even if they don't say a word to you the entire round, if you say, hey, there's a Yana coming up red stairs, and there's somebody near red stairs, they're going to end up looking near red stairs because that's near them, and they're concerned about themselves, right? And if there's a danger to themselves, they're going to start to care a little bit more. So when you give these calls to your teammates, they're going to start caring, I promise. Moving on to tip number eight, we have don't main operators. This is a big mistake I see a lot of the lower rank people make. People who are stuck in the bronze, silver, gold ranks. This is because y'all refuse to stop playing that one operator. I know, maining operators is fun. I get it. You always have that one special operator that you just love so much. Unfortunately, in Rainbow, that one operator doesn't work universally most of the time on every site. And your teammates will end up picking that operator a lot too. So the general good rule of them is to have three or four attackers and defenders that you are decent with. That way, if someone picks your operator or that operator isn't viable on the site, you can rotate onto another operator. You don't have to know every single operator in the game. Like, there's too many to know. I understand. Just learn three. That's that's the magic number. Just learn three on each side, and boom, you're going to be much easier to rotate on the different operators when it comes to the site or if your teammate picks your favorite operator. Moving on to tip number nine this is something I mentioned earlier in the video. This is the best way to improve. Before I did only solo queue i gosh i've been playing this game for a very long time and i was like pretty much a hard stuck plat i had hit diamond i think once and that was in void edge which was like ancient history that was when um i think yana came out a very long time ago and i barely hit it and i was with a duo so when i realized i was a duo in like a couple seasons after that i realized you know what i'm just gonna take the jump and just completely go fully solo queue and when I did that, it, it sucked at first, I'm not going to lie. It was hard, but I improved so much that my second season only solo queuing, I solo queued all the way to Diamond, which is one of the biggest accomplishments I've ever had in the game of Siege, and it's what I've built my channel off of. I promise you guys, when you guys fully get on board with solo queuing and you actually do it effectively, you guys will improve so much as players. Moving on to tip number 10, this is huge when it comes to being a good player, not in solo queue, but just in general taking breaks i know i always say you need to play consistency or consistently and a lot of people always say warming up play every day do this do that if this game is mentally draining you and you have other things like school and work that are going on in your life and it's really hard for you man take a break take like a week a month i don't even half a year just take time away from this game because if you let this game keep eating away at your mental you're not going to end up being able to enjoy it anymore. So it's more important to prioritize your mental health than it is this game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below any other videos you can see in the future. Subscribe to Astralis R6. I'm Alarm Plays. I hope you guys like this video. 
I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.